Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Scrapman, bringing you another episode of Scrap Mechanic, and we are back today in the flooded world. Last time, you may remember, we put this awesome uh, survival base in, and today we're going to be focusing on a variety of things. I'm not exactly sure what yet, but we're going to find out when we get there. Now, some of you may remember from the last episode that there are seven ducks hidden in here, and I was only able to find six. Well, thanks to your comments, I am now aware of where the missing duck went. So in here, I got thrown off because there's this one duck that's pretty obvious, but there's actually another duck in here. Do you see it yet? Do you see it? Well, no, you can't because it's actually um, right down there. Yep, so when I was crouching in here to look for it, like you, you can kind of see it a little bit, but uh, as I was distracted by this one, I just never noticed it. So there is the seventh duck. If you uh, missed that episode and want to see where the rest of the ducks are, then you're going to have to go watch that episode. Anyway, let's go ahead and see what we're going to be looking at today for our flooded world. All right, here we've got a pretty clever idea. This is by Sam Heger. This is called the Flooded World Secret Cave, and apparently this is designed to actually be underwater. Now, the idea is that some people essentially made a cave bunker in preparation for the flood, so these guys knew that the flood was happening. Hmm, why did they know about it? So they essentially saved themselves with this bunker here. So let's go ahead and spawn it in. Oh, this is actually pretty big. All right, so let's go ahead and check it out for... Oh, there go it has a doorway. It has like a vault door. That's pretty cool. Before we spawn it underwater, let's actually check out what's inside first, and then we'll figure out where we're going to put it. Oh. Oh, interesting. So it looks like they've managed to build a map of the world in here. Now, we looked at a map like this last time. It may have been made by the same person, if I remember correctly. But it uh, looks like these guys... These guys have some type of strategic stuff going on. There's the cow. <laughs> they got grenades? Where do these grenades come from? Need to use. What happens if I... What happens if I use a grenade? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was like, is this gonna explode? Is this like an explosives modded part or something? But no, it's a, apparently it's a tote block head. I really thought it was gonna explode there for a second. We got some tools, we got some... Oh. Is there like some switches for lights? What's this do? What's over here? Oh, okay. We got some radar here. Man, these people like it. They're, they're too prepared. They're suspiciously prepared. Oh, am I stuck here? There we go. Man, these people, they are suspiciously prepared for what? I don't know. What is this? Oh, we apparently we open it with that. Oh, okay. That's the door. All right. That makes more sense now. I was like, why isn't that doing anything? But is this supposed to... Is this supposed to do something? I don't know if that's supposed to do something. I'm confused at what these buttons on the chairs do. Maybe if all of them are on, something happens. All right, there's another one. And another one. Oh, and the last one, I think. I think that's all of them. It looks like they are attached to lights in the map. I'm not entirely positive. Oh, I missed the one by the main chair here. And... Oh, I'm in the chair. Oh, this one, this chair has a bunch of switches on it. Well, let's press number four first. There we go. So we do have to turn all of them on, apparently, and then the lights turn on. All right, what do these other buttons do? Here, let's go into first person. All right, number one. Okay, number two. Okay, number three. All right, so that turns on. So this turns on, like, all the lights. All right, so let's find a place to weld this. So it's supposed to be underwater, and I don't know if this has the water void blocks built into it anywhere, but I guess we'll find out when we get underwater. Let's open up the door, head on out, and where should we put it? Should we put it near the airport, or should we put it somewhere, like, hidden off in the more isolated areas? What about right back here? You think it'll fit over here somewhere? This seems like a nice isolated area off to the edge of the world. All right, it has been welded down and I filled in a bunch of the gaps around it. So let's see, can we walk inside of it or are we going to have to put some things in the inside? All right, it looks like we're going to put some things. I've never actually used these before, so it'll be interesting to see how it actually works. Air void block. And apparently we can increase the radius with it. So where should we put the air void block? I kind of like want to put it underneath the map since the map is kind of like central. Yeah, let's do that. We're going to put it right there. We now can walk normally, as you can see inside here. We can walk pretty much all around. I hope, I said it's like a 25 block radius and it, I think it works pretty well. Cause check it out. Once I go over to the exit, ready for this? As soon as I cross through the door, now I'm floating. Now I want to float. 
So now I'm curious, like, does that mean I can like walk on? Oh, I can walk on top. I mean, I guess that's okay though. Up oh, there we go. Yeah, I think this is pretty good. Like when I'm actually on the perimeter of it, I float. So I think that's a pretty good estimate. 25 blocks works well. All right, let's go ahead and close the door and check out some other creations. All right, we are back on our primitive survivalist island with all of our little shacks and stuff because we have a creation that is going to go here, or I think would fit really, really well here. So check this thing out. This is by Frankenstein. Frankenstein. It's a primitive watchtower. It needs to be two blocks off the ground to weld it. I'll have to remember that. All right, let's see what is going to happen with this. Oh, that is cool. That is cool. This is even better than I thought it was going to be. Look at that. It looks awesome. All right, where are we going to put this? You know what? Over here isn't too bad. What if we put the watchtower right over here? I mean, we could technically have more than one, too. But I think this is a good looking spot for it. So let's go ahead and weld it right here. All right, let's go ahead and climb up in this tower and check it out. All right, so first level, we got some storage boxes and stuff. Let's move on up to the top level here. Uh-oh. How do we get... There we go. He did say it was a little bit difficult to get up in here. All right, look at this. This looks really good. This looks like... Oh, we got a telescope here, too. Oh, that's good. Can we use it? No, it's just free-floating. Oh, you know what free-floating means. Free-floating means... Eh. <laughs> I'm easily amused. Oh, we got a... Oh, sorry. Telescope. We got a duck and some binoculars in here. All right, well, I found the hidden duck. Which I guess it wasn't that hidden. And then we got the roof. The roof looks pretty cool as well. All right, I like this. We're adding more and more to our world. Oh, wow. Did that really stop perfectly straight where it was? That's impressive. All right, I like where we're adding more and more to the world. Let's check out what else we're going to be putting around here. All right, up next, we have a really, really clever idea by Doodle Tanky. This is a survival, like, house built into a sewer pipe. Now, I don't know where exactly to put that. I don't know if this is going to be, like... I mean, a sewer pipe, I feel like, should have been underground. So where would this fit on the world? But let's... I just want to look at this. All right, check this out. Check this out. It looks awesome from the outside. And I love the opening, the, the entrance gate. So let's... I think we pull the switch here. There we go. Oh, and there's a sensor to trigger a shark for whatever reason. We got a radio. We got some pipes going on in here. We got three beds. Wow, there's a lot of people living in this sewer pipe. We've also got a bathroom area over here. It's somewhat isolated too. So that's pretty cool. I feel like this this shouldn't be underwater because there's just too many the sewer pipes. So it's not going to keep water out or anything. We got a bathroom over here. So I'm wondering maybe the flood, the damage... Uh-oh, did I just get myself stuck back here? Did, did I really just do this? There we go. Bathtub to save the day. Well, I guess it's possible that the damage from the flood could have dislodged a sewer pipe and somehow maybe the waves or the currents had carried it over on near this island somewhere and then these people were able to use their, uh, their power of intelligence to figure out how to drag such a heavy thing out of the water onto the island somewhere and then uh, craft a home in it, but... You know, I think it fits the makeshift kind of vibe of this island, so I think it fits here the best. So let's add another awesome home to this island. Just where are we actually? I think we're going to put it up over here. All right, there we have it. We got our sewer home just hanging out right here over in its little corner. Probably doesn't smell the best, but, you know, maybe they've managed to clean it out a decent amount. Oh, we even got the stabilizer mug. I didn't notice that at first. All right, let's check out some more awesome creations from you guys. All right, here is something pretty cool looking. This is the Flooded World Hang Glider by Xenox. Apparently, this has the capability to land and take off both in land and water. All right, well, let's check it out. Oh, look at that. Looks like we got, like, the tail fin back here. That looks awesome. All right, so if this could take off from land... Oh, there's wheels underneath. This looks really cool. This is a really kind of, like, modern-looking hang glider, too. I wonder where this came from. All right, so apparently it uses my controls. So let's see. Hey. Not bad. Not bad at all. It wants to pitch down, naturally. Okay, just getting the hang of it here. And look, we have like the fan or the propeller in the back. That's pretty cool. This thing works really well. And look at the, the wing designs too. Those are some pretty cool wing designs. 
I really like this. Let's see if we can land on the airport. Uh oh, pitch up, pitch up. Okay. Okay. We're not doing the best at maintaining a steady... A steady trajectory. Eh. Eh. <laughs> okay, we're just gonna... We're just gonna come down and clonk on the ground. There we go. Well, that wasn't bad. Oh, let's try the what We didn't try the water. Uh, supposedly, we can take off and land in the water, too. So let's see how the floating goes. Alright. And how close are we? Oh, that was so easy. That was so easy. Look at this thing. This thing is so cool. Alright, let's go ahead and give ourselves... A water takeoff here. Uh-oh. 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 Go oh, there we go. Alright. Well, this thing works pretty well. It looks awesome. I love the design of it. And uh, it's very multi-purpose. Water and land capable. Alright, let's go ahead. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh. <laughs> I can't believe we just avoided everything there. That was awesome. All right, so if you ever need a hang glider to get around, we have the, the hang glider for us right there. All right, up next by Krampus Cuddler. This is an AI catfish, I guess. And look at this thing looks awesome as a catfish. I actually, I, I haven't, I don't remember seeing this before. So I'm glad I can't just randomly stumbled across it. Let's see what it does. All right, we're just going to go ahead and put it down in the water here. Does it float automatically? Oh, does it go automatically? Well, there it goes. Look at it go. It's pretty cool. And what happens is it got to turn away from... Oh, look at that. It is. It's turning away from the land. Does it, like, does it detect underneath? Oh, I see. I see how the sensors are working now. All right. That's cool. And you know what I like about this one? Is it's slow. And because it's slow, that means it's less likely to get randomly stuck into places because it has more time to react. So I'm actually going to let this one loose and just uh, we'll see what happens in future episodes where we end up finding it. Because I don't know if this will actually get stuck against a wall or anything. I think the worst, the worst thing for AI fish on this map are those trees near the apartment buildings. They're like little trees sticking up and they don't really, they're hard to sense because they're so thin. But uh, I think I got one more creation that I want to look at for this episode. And then I want you guys to leave some comments on what you like to see in future episodes. This is more of a big variety episode. There's no particular theme for this one. But in the last episode, you may remember that we looked at like uh, Grandma's mobile tea merchant ship. Well, we got another merchant ship submission. And I think this looks awesome as far as the scavenging kind of idea goes. Like, you can see we clearly, he's clearly used the remnants of an 18-wheeler truck as the cab of this raft here. So this is by King Oasis Vader 753. This is Ben Decker's trading shop. It's the center of his tribe, the tribe of Benjamin. After the pirates of the Black Pearl decimated their settlements on the island, the tribe of Benjamin was only left with their trading boats. The original inhabitants of the islands have been recovering and living on their bots ever since. I think he meant boats there. Let's check it out. Ooh, this thing's laggy. Oh boy, this thing is laggy. This uses a lot of blocks. Okay, all right, a lot of scripted blocks. You know what I'm thinking? I think the Black Pearl, because of how massive it is, is using up way too many buoyancy mod resources. So uh, as much as I love having it as an atmospheric object on this world, I think it's uh, limiting us and our ability to look at more complex creations like this that we're trying to look at right now. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hypothesize here that if I delete the black pearl out of the world, which I really don't want to do, there it is, way over there. Then we can probably spawn this thing in without any lag issues. Man, but look at this thing! It looks so awesome. I mean, technically, all I really would have to do is find all of the scripted blocks and delete them out of here, since we're not actually using them. But that in of itself would be a process. I'm going to back up this world right now, and then we're going to delete the Black Pearl. And then we're going to spawn this thing in and see if that's the cause. All right, Black Pearl is deleted. Will this thing still lag out my world? Hmm, it does. It still lags out the world. Why? 
does it lag out the world? I want to look at this thing so bad. All right, you know what? Let's just let's just look at it anyway. We're not going to have a lot of frames, but this thing looks amazing. And I really just want to see what it does. All right, well, welcome to a whole... Oh, oh, it might be laggy because the trailer is actually attached, I think, like a trailer. So maybe if that was welded instead of on a free bearing, it might not be so laggy. But anyway, welcome to a whole eight frames, six to eight frames a second. Uh, let's go ahead and explore this and see what it does. I kind of want to drive it, though. All right, we're opening the, the cockpit door here, closing it. Oh, we can open up the top to get out. We'll just leave that open so we don't get stuck. We have the other door. And then... Oh, and then we can open up the hood, too. What's in the hood? Oh, there's a lot of blocks there. A lot of blocks for the water stuff, I think. All right, so should we... Are we, are we just able to, like, drive it forward? Oh, we got the propellers going. It's working. It's very slow, but it's working. And then you can see when we turn, you can see those going on underneath. This ain't so bad. Yeah, this totally works. That's awesome. This is such a cool looking design. I wish it wasn't as leggy as it is, though. Look at this. This is so cool. All right, let's go ahead and stop. Let's get on out. Oh, oh, it is laggy. And I want to see what the back of this area is all about. All right, we're walking to the back of the shop. Let's see if we got some tubs for sale. We got some sink parts. We got some refrigerators. We got some antenna stuff. Communications things. We got some oven ranges, some toilets, some propellers, some food. All kinds of stuff back here. All right, what about this? All right, looks like we got... I think this is actually... Oh, we got some shark. You want to eat some shark? What is this right here? All right, looks like we got some more stove pieces. This is like a Home Depot, like in a in a ship. Oh, and then they they sleep over here, and it's just like a bathroom. Yeah, and we got our bathroom inside. This is pretty cool. Oh, can we? Oh, these are supposed to be doors. They're not working right now. I could probably fix it like this though. Oh, maybe not. Hmm, that usually works. But yeah, these are supposed to be doors that open, it looks like. But unfortunately, it won't work. So we said in the description that we can delete the trailer and just use the front. So let's just see how that does with our lag. As much as I know you guys are enjoying this high quality 6 FPS, I'm going to see if I can get us a little bit more. Okay, so doing this, I think I've determined that it is actually the water activator blocks and not the fact that the trailer was attached by a, um, by a bearing. Because otherwise, it, when the trailer was attached over there, the lag would have stopped. All right, now we got to get back on here. There we go. Whew, okay, we got our frames back. I mean, we don't have full frames, but we got enough frames for it to be tolerable at least. All right, so let's drive this thing around. It should be a lot faster now. Eh. Oh yeah, there we go. Look at, I like, even this by itself is pretty awesome. Like, we just got to put a bed on here or something. And this, oh, 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 there's a bed inside. All right, this is like, this is a standalone awesome thing. Yep, I really like like even without the trailer, this by itself is awesome enough. I'm I wanna I wanna use this. I just wanna use this. Oops, whoops, we're hitting the land there. And it's really fast too. Alright, let me know which one of these creations was your favorite. And if you enjoyed this episode, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss future content like this. I'm looking forward to seeing what other kinds of awesome creations that we're gonna add to this flooded world. Um, I think we can probably reload the Black Pearl one for the next episode since uh, the Black Pearl didn't seem to have that big of a impact. It was just this creation by itself that was having an impact on itself. So at least we got that going for us. But anyway, this has been Scrapman and I'll see you next time. Bye.